all of a sudden something happens, say, over here in Stockton. Uh, and uh, say, you know, they're, they want to issue an amber alert. Who actually then does the evaluation to say whether or not it reaches that level? What are the pro what's the process for actually activating? Well, the way it works, is, as soon as there's a notification, the local agency, say in Stockton, would go, go to the family and they would take a report. And if they believe that it meets the criteria of the Assembly Bill 415 mm -hmm. that you authored, they will contact the California Hive Patrol. We have a 24-7 operation here in Sacramento where they'll, they'll call us. What we are required to do by law is to make sure it meets those four parameters that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Actual abduction, under the age of 17, imminent danger, and if enough information to put out. If it meets that criteria, then the California Hive Patrol then has the responsibility to activate the alert. And we can do it regionally, or we can do it half the state, or we can do the full state, depending upon how much time has elapsed mm -hmm. since the abduction. So once we make that determination that is, it meets the description, then we will put that into play. In our first call, we work very closely with the National Weather Service because they have the training and the background and all the equipment to do the immediate broadcast. Most Does of it, because those are, the, those are the alerts that people are used to when all of a sudden they hear their radio go beeping off, you know, about, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, the that there's tornado. a tornado or, or hard thunderstorms, long winds coming in so that people are used to hearing, oop, there's an alert out there, I need to listen. Right. It, uh, that, that is our first call. That goes out. Then at the same time, we're on the phone with the Department of Transportation, Caltrans. We start using the changeable message signs. We have the responsibility to make sure that we type the right message because the signs can only carry three or four lines. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure that your message can be read can be, as a car goes by. It goes by. Yes, they have to see it. So the, the least amount of information, the better. But mm -hmm. you have to make sure it's the appropriate information or people won't know who to call. Mm -hmm. They won't know what to look for. So then we take care of that. And then we start putting information out to some of our other partners, which is the, the EDIS system, which is your emergency digital information system, which then starts putting out more information to all the local police departments, to your newspapers and, and other venue, media venues that we have out there. Uh, we work very closely with uh, child abduction uh, service groups you know, that have been involved. Where they'll help us send out uh, digital photographs. Mm -hmm. And so the whole system then is, is, is run out of our emergency operations center, but it's worked very collaboratively with a lot of different institutions 